Betty and Jeff Manning live in Oldfield Road, Stoke Newington. Lived here for 76 six years. We're 76 and 77. And um, we were born in Hackney. I was born in Oldfield Road in the house next door in the front bedroom upstairs and we've never really been anywhere else. And I was born in the mother's home in Clapton which is now um, a palatial block of flats, the old um, Salvation Army mother's home um, and from then I, after I was born there then I lived in Barrett's Grove which was, is still here. Uh, and I lived there until about 1970-something, 70 73, no, no, earlier. Moved in about 1968 to uh, Walford Road, next door to the synagogue, which I used to uh, turn the lights on and off for the Jewish community as a child. Earned myself two shillings every time I did that. Um, and then in 71 we got married. I moved from, um, from Walford Road to next door to where Betty was born. And uh, the rest is history, we are still here. Didn't, well, I didn't go to a nursery or anything like that. They really didn't exist. But um, we used to play an awful lot uh, on bomb sites at the bottom of, which was Truman's Road, which is off of Matthias Road, but it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and we were basically street kids. We, we learnt, learnt our trade on the street. We, we played and we had good fun. We just knew that there were maybe one house or two houses in the street that were hit. Uh, they, they, were, they were rebuilt and um, we, we just knew they were bomb houses. But uh, there was no real devastation, fortunately, where we were. Mm. So it was, it's a, you know, it was a fun place to live. And uh, in Truman's Road, where my, um, both my grandmothers lived, um, it was basically a play street, so there was no traffic. But there was never any traffic anyway. I mean, if you looked at Oldfield Road when we were kids, there was only two cars in the street. One was um, a Reverend, I can't think of his name. Thomas. Reverend Thomas. And there was an old guy next door, number four. Uh, he was a traveling salesman, so he had a car. So we used to, as kids, we used to just play marbles and um, picture cards in the street. And the only thing that we may have been knocked down by was a, a horse and cart. <laughs> I don't remember much about the war. It wasn't really talked about. My dad would never never talked about the war whatsoever. But my mum, she was here and she was a, a single woman. Or well, she was married, but she didn't have any children. And so she was in the ARP. And she worked in some pubs. She worked in the Cali and she did little jobs like that. But um, And she had a great time. She enjoyed herself, really. She used to t say she was in constant fear of peace because she quite enjoyed herself, really. She enjoyed... She didn't like digging people out of uh, um, Aden Grove bomb sites, but the, the camaraderie was good, and she enjoyed it. And my mum was a bit of a, a comedian, and she would enjoy life. She did. And she she liked all that. She lived here, but she went all around. And she didn't have any family. She didn't. Her mum had died, and so she 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 quite enjoyed herself. Really, that's it. My only impact of the war, but. But because we were sort of like baby boomers, there was loads of children born just after the war. So down the street, there was this old field road, there was lots of kids and we were all the same age. Mm. And we all played together, like Jeff says, we played in the streets and we had little, we played in people's front gardens and we did, you know, played mums and dads and dollies and things like that that girls do. But down mm. the street, there was lots of kids and we were all together. We had, we had a good time really when I think about that, mm. because we were For all sure. the same age, we were all at the... Mm -hmm. It wasn't many, some of them had baby brothers, but most sisters, but mostly we were all the same age. Uh, yeah, I, I remember um, queuing up with my mother at Sainsbury's at Dalston, very small shop in those days, and uh, you would queue up for butter. And a person would, you wouldn't buy it as a pack, a person would cut it off for a great big slab, and there used to be two sticks that they used to pack it yeah. and these these women that used to do this they they could get it within yeah, exactly. a, a slice of an ounce yeah. to to a half a pound of butter and then they would wrap it up individually but butter used to be a great big great big slab mm -hmm. of, did, of butter we didn't have chocolates or sweets much did we there no. was a bit of still rationing on the sweets mm. Mm. and we had my mum had my mum had had an american friend during the war and he was still sent over parcels, food parcels. So we used to get some food parcels from quite some exciting things. We used to get cho 
Symbols chocolate biscuits and they were really excited and, and my mum would I knew where they were hidden and she used to get them and we just have one we might sometimes have two but I was, when I look at my grand my grandchildren now and they get this they just go to the cupboard and just you know but the, ours wasn't exactly rationed but oh, we no. had to be no. a bit careful because yeah. you know they were, they were special mm -hmm. <laughs> Ridley Road in. yeah Ridley Road was the main shopping area because it was street. markets so Sainsbury's did exist, but um, you only bought butter or cheese there. And then you went and bought all vegetables in, in the local market. Yeah, went to the high street. My yeah. mum went to the high street because we were this side. So we went to the high street more than we went down to Dawson. Well, they shopped, they shopped every day. My mother went out every day and shopped. Uh, she shopped fresh every day. Uh, so we didn't, didn't have a, a refrigerator at the time. Um, we used to have, a, when they lived here, there used to be an old safe that is n nice and cool up there. And there used to be a safe there which you would keep the milk or the um, or the meat, but that's why you went out daily. So if you were going to have a, a a lamb chop or a pork chop, you went out and you you bought one on the Tuesday and you ate it. And then if you wanted sausages on the Wednesday, then you you bought the sausages. So mums so used to go out shopping all the time, day, all the time. We didn't have a bath. No, I, it, we we had we lived in Barrett's Grove, but um, we shared the house with somebody else. And uh, Friday night was bath night, which is our cake now, when you think about it. And I was fifth in line for the bath, being the youngest, and you would have the same water. And I can still remember the, the this old zinc bath in the cellar. Um, and there was this scum, a white scum across the top. Can't imagine that now. <laughs> we, we now we all get in the shower every morning. <laughs> we yep. went to the one up there. I went, well, I used to go to the one in Arcola Street. Mm -hmm. There was one down there. But again, only once a week. Yeah, yeah. And it the, the used to you used to shout out. I think it used to cost sixpence, and you used to sh you would put in a cubicle with this with this great big bath, and you would. They would oh, half fill it up, and then if it started to get cold, you'd sh you know, shout out, more hot water in number three. And then she <laughs> somehow or other, she turned the tap on from some yeah. centre, didn't yeah. she? And it, it, was ch it was cheaper if you took your own soap. And towel. And towel. <laughs> and towel, which we did. <laughs> which we did. We, we had it was cold. coal fire in one room, which was in the living room. Uh, the rest of the place, if you could Freezing. afford it, you you had a one bar electric fire. We didn't have but much, we didn't have the, the money to put that on. But you used to oh, wake yeah, up in the, the morning and you used to go <sighs> like that. And and there would be this mist and you knew it was really cold. So And then you would step out and it would be really cold everywhere. The but then until you went into the kitchen, the kitchen was the hub. You get into the kitchen so there's there was a fire in the kitchen and it would be warm and you would have breakfast and you would all get dressed in the kitchen because it was too too cold to get dressed anywhere else. As a teenager then we moved from uh, Barrett's Grove to Walford Road and that was into a council flat. Now that was complete luxury because there was a bathroom. We'd never had a bathroom before and you could turn a tap on and you'd get hot water. It was, was so it was unbelievable. Actually. It was pure luxury, which, you know, the kids of our generation, they didn't have a bath. You know, you, you went to the public baths. I always thought we were absorbed. I mean, I, I like Stoke Newington as it is, and I still do. And I, there's this word Stokey, which really gets in my craw. I cannot like, stand it. We don't it. like Stokey. We didn't know it was happening. My mum was devastated. My mum was pretty Tory, very, very, very Tory. Tory. Very Tory. She was a Tory. She tried to be a Tory councillor in Stoke Newington when it was Stoke Newington. We lived in a, in a council um, flat, so it was always better when it was uh, Stoke Newington run because it was local. But once it was absorbed by the big conglomerate, um, we, we, you lost, you lost time really. I suppose things used to take an awful lot longer because you'd taken on yeah. uh, other other parts of the borough. The rubbish become a bit disorganised, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. The, the collection, all that sort of thing. It was because <coughs> it was such a big place. We mm -hmm. just. But it's correct. I mean, they've corrected it oh, all now. Yeah. It's it's fine. It is good now.
I'm born and bred well in Stoke Newington, we Stoke and we're we're, Newington. we're Stoke Newington people. But uh, Stoke when Newington. people say oh, yes. you live in Hackney, I say no, I live in Stoke Newington, because that's where we are. But that that goes back many years. The thing that I noticed about um, uh, home ownership came into its own in the in the early 70s because we all started to get married and uh, the the local um, people that used to own all the houses which was a big Jewish community used to own most of the houses and um, they started to let them go and people started to become homeowners they didn't want to live in flats anymore within housing which in most countries now people do they they their their, their grandparents live with them but they they don't want that anymore you know young people like us at the time, they want their own property. And a lot of and our friends moved away. Yeah, lots of our friends did move away. Winter. They wanted, just wanted to get away from Stoke They, they wanted to get away, London. green grass, they said. They wanted yeah. green grass and a better place for children to grow up rather than in the inner cities, which I never ever agreed with. And now, um, well, even oh. 20 years ago, they would all say we made a big mistake Anything to get back because now we'd love to come back but we can't afford it now the children are grown up and the, the kids have left yeah, they so that's that's the, the whole theater. thing mm. you know they go to they want to go to the theater they come to london they got to get the train back to whatever and there's no music so they wish they hadn't have done it the three-day week yeah. yeah which we we went through um i remember that yeah that was yeah. fun really wasn't it <laughs> in, in some respects yeah <laughs> it was yeah. dark yeah we used to have little because my mum and dad lived next door and so we used to get together we worked out what time it was going to be didn't we we'd have a supper laid on and candles and things didn't mm. we so mm. we quite we quite enjoyed that really we, we was with them quite a lot over that period for me uh, the the area has, has, has just increased in value but in the people have changed people moved in they had better jobs different kind of jobs i mean when we we look at the people that live in our street now um there are a lot of lawyers bankers um accountants, accountants. They're, they're all professional people that move in but it wasn't um, like that when we were kids no not at all but yeah. you know thank goodness for all those professionals because it gave me a living for 45 yeah. years being a decorator so but the wonderful thing is that they could balance a balance sheet but they couldn't hang wallpaper and that was fine so it, it did well for us as a you know as a family yeah, really yeah. it was much better for the whole area the, the area had completely changed you know it was gentrification literally yeah. um, restaurants started to open uh, they still do today um, and people still can afford to go out to yeah, eat we never went not, out all, to not all people I don't think but there's still money here. But when you look at Church Street now we went we went to pizza place yesterday didn't we mm. but when you walk along Church Street it's such a look all those restaurants was when I was a kid we never went to a restaurant never never went no. to, my dad wouldn't go local to fish and chip shop and that was it the, the funny part about Stoke Newington is is that when you mentioned the word Stoke Newington people used to say if you were on holiday where do you come from London what part and you go Stoke Newington I've never heard of that but nowadays everybody's heard of Stoke oh. Newington it's it's you very in, strange you live in Stoke Newington they say to us oh, you must be rich what do you do what do you do about football I said well I, I don't no, like it don't do football, I said I'm between the Arsenal and the Tottenham I actually as a child I used to go to the Arsenal one week and and Tottenham the next 